Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Managing RF in your station can be uh, quite a challenge. Uh, the key thing to remember is once you've got it figured out, it's usually going to stay pretty stable. Uh, the book talks about a couple ways to bond all of your equipment together so that it's all at the same RF voltage approximately and hopefully that's somewhere close to uh, ground. Uh, the thing it shows in the text in this bottom diagram right here uh, is how to bond the equipment together in your shack and then it shows a line which runs from the bonding point down to your station ground which is what's referred to as your single point ground uh, this is where all your antennas come to uh, control cables things like that are all grounded at that single point now that ground should be real near your station uh, at least as close as you can. It's a little harder if you're on the second floor, but it can be done. Um, and then that station ground should be bonded with a heavy piece of bare wire to your utility ground. Um, in my case, uh, the um, station ground is on one corner of the house and the next corner down is where the utility ground is and I've got them uh, grounded. The book points out something that it doesn't give a name to but it's called skin effect. Uh, this is the tendency of RF to travel on the outside of a conductor not down through the middle of it. So for your grounding this is why you see so much flat braid and uh, copper strap is also readily available uh, places like Home Depot and so on and that can run down to your uh, station ground. The, the thing about copper strap uh, you know usually only about that wide or so it's all flat and it's got an awful lot of surface area compared to the area inside whereas a round cable uh, doesn't have as much uh, surface area per amount of copper uh, that the flat strap does. So um, you might get something that feels like RF feedback uh, in the station. You can hear it in your receiver when you're trying to transmit. You may hear garbage coming out of your receiver. You might hear garbage in your headphones. Uh, the person you're talking to may say that your signal sounds very distorted. That can happen too. You can even get RF burns touching exposed pieces of equipment in the shack. That's a very good sign that you have a problem managing RF in your station. Um, often just moving the cables around uh, is enough to take care of it. Do, however, have a single point ground rod. Okay, a foot ground rod's fine. Uh, near the station that you can run a wire or, or strap uh, from your station up to or down out to the ground rod. That's what I do. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.